Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to connect to your flight controllers without a USB. And we're going to be doing it over Wi-Fi for only four bucks, which is absolutely insane. So um, recently I've had this breakthrough. I've been actually working on it for a while. I've just been using the wrong kind of things and I finally got it to work and it works absolutely insanely beautiful. Uh, you can even stay connected while your quad's flying, pull the black box lock. However, I don't recommend that because the CPU will just jump skyrocket while you're doing that. And it's just not good. But for example, you landed, you want to change the ESC protocol, which you can't do in the OSD. So you can go ahead and do that through the beta flight. It could be 10, 20, whatever meters away from you. As long as you're connected to it, you're going to be totally fine. So the way it works is it works by Wi-Fi. So this thing here will take five volts from your flight controller or all in one flight control or PDB, wherever, and you connect RX and TX to the UART on the flight controller. Simple, right? Very simple. Four wires, four bucks. Now, I highly recommend you get the exact same one I'm showing you here because I'm going to be showing you how to flash this with the correct firmware. And it's very important because these come in many different specs and they all look alike. However, the one that I'm showing you is going to be the one we're going to be using because I'm going to show you exactly where to flash the addresses in the EEPROM uh, because we have to flash more than one file. And it's a very simple process. Don't 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 get scared. It's very easy. Um, so it's just absolutely simple. And what this does now, once it's connected, once we have everything connected, you boot up your quad, you have it on the floor. This thing will broadcast a Wi-Fi network. It'll be called ESP, some random number. What you do is you connect to it just like you would connect to any wireless router. We're going to have another program, which is kind of like a virtual COM port. And once you're connected to this, you open up that program and you put the IP address of this guy. It's going to be all the same IP address, so there's going to be nothing different. Just the same process I'm going to show you is the same way it's going to work. Once you do that, it'll create a virtual COM port and you could actually specify what number you want. Let's just say we made it COM port 10, so it'll be COM 10. And uh, we open beta flight, we could actually see COM port 10, click on it, click connect, and we're connected to the flight controller. You could pull the black box log, you could change your ESC protocols, which you can't do in the OSD. You can do a lot of things with just removing that shitty USB wire. And um, yeah, it's going to be absolutely awesome. So enough talking, and let's get started. All right, guys, so first things first, we need to find an open UART on the flight controller, and we also need to find a 5 volt in ground. However, I'm using here the Kakute V2. This is the normal flight controller, and I just received it. I'll be doing the testing later on on it, but I'm just going to quickly do it because I had it on the desk, so I just started playing with this one. So as you can see here, the red wire here is taking 5 volt, T4 and R4, RX4 and TX4. And here we have ground. Obviously, you need ground to power anything up. So that's what we have here. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. And this is going to be very simple also. As you can see, 5 volt. Obviously, we're going to need 5 volt. Ground's right next to it. Super awesome. So we're going to solder those there from the flight controller. This works on any flight controller, but you must have an open UART. And it should not be inverted. For example, this one, if you use UART3, it's actually inverted, and there's no way in hell you're going to get this to work without doing some other modifications. So I highly recommend you know your UARTs and hoping that it's not inverted. All right, so let's go ahead and see here. So here, like I mentioned, UART4 is uninverted, so that's beautiful. That's what we want. And as you can see here, we also have an RX and a TX. Wow, that's awesome. So what you want to do is uh, you want to kind of op connect them, you know, um, backwards or opposite or whatever you want to call it. So for example, this one, the white wire here is uh, TX4. So it's a T. So you, what you want to do is you want to take the T and connect it to the R. And you want to take the R from here and connect it to the T. You want to connect them backwards. You want to flip them. Because T is transmit. And it transmitting, it needs to go to a receive port here. So when it transmits, this receives. And the same thing goes here. The T here needs to go to a receive here. So the t transmit to receive. So it's just that simple. T to R and R to T or T, just always just the opposite. Whatever, it, if you have a T wire connected to the R and if you have an R connected to the T, simple. All right, so that's all we need to do. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. And um, well, actually let's do it together. Why not, we should, we should, let's just do it together. So let's just take a look here. And this thing is very far away from me. So if I'm not gonna be able to solder it perfect, you're gonna have to excuse me on this one. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply power here which is five volt right there. And I have my red wire is five volt here. The hardest part here is not the connecting. It's more of the um, flashing really. All 
All right, beautiful. Well, it's not really beautiful, but it'll do the job right now. All right. Okay, so the white wire is T on the flight controller. So the T would need to go to an R. So it needs to go to the opposite one. We can't go, we can't put T to T and R to R. However, you know, some uh, VTXs might confuse you because they would go T to T, but that's a whole different protocol. So T is going to R. And it's very important to keep track of what you are to actually connected these two on your flight controller because you're going to need that in a little bit. All right, let's take a look what we did here. So as you can see here, five volt, we gave it five volt ground. We gave it ground. Beautiful. We're done there. So here we have the R, the RX and the TX. Let's take a look at the flight controller. The flight controller, this white wire is TX4. So TX4, uh, so basically a TX would need to go to an RX. So the white wire is going to the R. And the yellow wire here is RX4, so it's an RX, so it needs to go to a TX, so it went to TX right there. And for setting up, that's it, we're basically done here. All right, so let's go ahead and now jump to Betaflight and seeing how we're also going to flash this guy. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, guys, so below you're going to find a file, a link to the files that you're going to need for this program, and it's going to be all compressed into one folder. Now, once you go ahead and compress it, you should see something called beta Wi-Fi. Click on it, and you'll see this program here. I highly recommend you start by installing it. You just double click on it, you know, yes, next, 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 and, um, and you should be good to go. So once you do that, uh, we're going to go ahead and log in to Betaflight first. So you want to go ahead and connect your flight controller via USB to Betaflight because we need to set up just a quick setup into Betaflight. So let's go ahead and do that now. And so right now we're just connecting normal USB here and we're going to go ahead and connect and we're going to go to the ports tab because it's very important. And if you remember, we used UART4, which was TX4 and RX4 for the UART. And what you want to do is on the, on the UART, you want to make sure everything is disabled except this. This, this has to be enabled. So you want to enable this right here, save and reboot, and you should be good to go. However, some UARTs are inverted for SBUS, so take that into consideration. Make sure you don't put it on an inverted UART. That's very important. So I know here UART 4 is uninverted, so I'm good to go. So that's all done. That's all beautiful. Now let's go ahead and start flashing the device, the blue device, the Wemos. So what you want to do is you want to disconnect the USB from your um, <clears throat> flight controller, and you want to connect it into the device that wi-fi device the mcu which is we're just going to call it the esp all right so once that's done uh once we've installed this program and already uh enabled the uart in beta flight you want to go ahead and figure out if your pc is a windows 32 bit or a 64 bit if you don't know just stick to 32 however i know mine's a 64 so i'm going with the 64 so you're going to be greeted with these files here and what you want to take a look at is this one right here. It's called the ESP8266 Flasher. So let's go ahead and open it. And you're going to see a bunch of tabs up here. Now I know, first you want to go ahead and correct the correct COM port. Mine is COM22. You might just have one and it'll be that. I have other things on my PC. So I know for sure it's COM22 on mine. Yours will be different. <clears throat> Next you want to go to is to config here. This is very important. Now. Now yours might not look like this in red. Yours might be just empty like this. So don't worry, it's totally fine, whatever it is. What you wanna do first is you wanna make sure the first four are, or they have X's are checked. You know, these check boxes are checked, the first four. And what you wanna do is you want to go to the first one and you see this gear icon. We want to correct, choose the correct file, which is boot v1.6. So let's go ahead and do that. And then there's boot v1.6. Now these are the files that were exactly from the place where we ran this program from. So inside the beta Wi-Fi, it doesn't matter which folder you choose here. Both of the files are exactly the same. So we're going to need boot one v uh, boot v1.6 for the first file, and it should turn green. Beautiful. All right. 
And now we need to make sure we select the correct address in the EEPROM so we could flush it correctly. So for the first one, we needed the 0x all zeros. Beautiful, we're done here. It should turn green. Make sure you have the X there. Let's move to the second one now. The second one here is going to be the blink.bin. So we're going to go ahead and choose this and choose the blink.bin. Beautiful, green. And you need to write to this correct address, which is 3FE000. Beautiful, everything's fine. Now the third file is the ESP in it. So let's go ahead. There's the ESP in it. Turn green, check the beautiful, all right. And this is supposed to write to address. 3FC00, and you can go ahead and do that. You could find them through this drop down list here. And now, the last but not least is the user1.bin. Go ahead and click the gear icon again, find the user1.bin, and make sure we're writing the, the correct address, which is 01000. And there's going to be a bunch of addresses. Just choose the same ones I have provided here. Now, the next step, you want to go to the advanced tab and make sure you have the same exact setup that I do here, which is the baud rate 74,880, flash size 4 megabyte, flash speed 40 megahertz, SPI mode DIO. And once that's all beautiful, you got everything correct here, go to operations and press flash. It should take it less than three minutes, depending on your PC. It'll flash all four files. So it'll go one, two, three, four, and you're done there. So once that's done, you want to go ahead and close it. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and power your uh, flight controller or your quad basically. Power up your quad, make sure there's no props on it. Once it's powered, you need to make sure that this is powered from the 5 volt rail. So if we connect basically the Kakute now with the USB, the blue you know microcontroller unit is not going to be powered until we give it power. So let's go ahead and apply power. For example, put a battery. Make sure no USB is connected to the quad or the device itself. I'm not saying it'll burn anything, but just so we know it's working. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and apply power now to the Kakute here. Or my flight controller so for example i just put the battery in my quadcopter now let's go ahead and see what we have to do so first i'm not going to be able to show you this but you need to do is uh search for your wireless networks you know how we just look for a wi-fi connection and you're gonna feel you, you should find one called esp some random number click on it and connect there should be no password once you're connected then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and open a browser your web browser and you want to put this IP address. It's 192.168.1, no, sorry, dot .4.1, and then press enter. All right, I'll leave this IP address down in the description. Once you press enter, you should be greeted with a page like this. However, ig ignore my setup here. And your PC should not have any internet, so don't worry, because you're connected to that wireless, the blue thing, and that blue thing doesn't have internet, obviously. So once you go ahead and put this 192.168.4.1, you should be greeted with this page. Beautiful. So the first thing you want to make sure here is you want to see, make sure the RX pull-up is checked, right? And then just, you know, click it, click it again just to make sure you're good. All right, so here we're basically done. Now, for, let's just say, for example, you wanted to add a password to this blue thing. So when you connect to it Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and have a password so no one could log in and mess with your stuff. So what you want to do is you want to go to Wi-Fi Soft AP right here and change this to WPA2 PSK and put a password for your Wi-Fi, which is that blue thing. And uh, if you don't want to, I, I highly recommend don't mess with this if, if you trust the people around you. I don't think a lot of people know how to do this anyways. So yeah, just leave this. Don't save anything. I recommend just leave it. So basically now we're 100% sure everything is working. As you can see, once we're here at this page, basically everything is working. Now, the program that we just installed, which is uh, this one right here, this one, the HWVSP3, it should be called HW Virtual Serial Port. And once we click on it, we should get something like this. However, I'm just going to go ahead and restart it because there's a way to actually start this thing. All right, so I've gone ahead and opened it. It's called HW Serial Port. And if you're going to be greeted with this, you might be on this tab or any other tab. Make sure you're on the virtual serial port tab right here. And as you can see here, we can't do anything. So what you want to do first, you want to click login and then press OK. And now we're good. So you want to take a look at the IP address here. Now you want to put the same exact IP address that you put in your web browser, which is 192.168.4.1. I'll leave it down below. 
and here you can go ahead and choose any COM port you want. I want it to be COM port 10. So for me, I'm actually going to be a different IP. Just don't follow my IP. Use the one I linked down below because I have a different setup on mine. All right. So for example, I put the 4.1. You're going to go ahead and create COM port now. So let's go ahead and create that. As you can see here, we got creating. So this is the status here. And once it creates, it basically sounds like you plug the USB into your device. As you can hear that, hopefully. And uh, that made a virtual COM port 10 for us on the system. And this is a very important part, LAN status connected. This is what you really want. Connected is beautiful. Now what we want to do is we want to actually open Betaflight. And here is COM port 10, which is what we just made. So that's beautiful. So COM port 10, now let's press connect. Hopefully everything works. And everything is Wi-Fi right now. I'm powering off the quad from a battery in connected Wi-Fi. There is no USB connected to anything on the quadcopter. So all this is done wirelessly. It's pretty fast also. I don't, I don't think I have a black box on here. You could pull your black box log. You could change your anything, rates, whatever you want. So it's, it's, just, it's just awesome. I kind of hit the power here. That's why. There we go. So... It's pretty fast. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but it, it just works beautiful. So in the field, you could always connect to it. As long as your PC is connected to that blue thing's Wi-Fi network, um, you have access. It's just that awesome. And if you get disconnected, you might have to reconnect and just restart your virtual port. And for some reason, you got disconnected your Wi-Fi or something, or you pulled the battery. All you have to do is get that program again, which is this guy here. Delete com. If you just want to restart it, make sure you also uh, to also double check that your uh, Wi-Fi thing is working. Open the tab and then just re I highly recommend you keep this open. Refresh it. It's beautiful. That means it's working. Let's see, as you can see here, so it's working. So we don't have to worry. And it's already connected because we just did the reconnecting here. And let's just say, look, check this out. So um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect here and watch COM port 10 here. Look what we're going to do now. And we're going to say delete COM port. It's gone. That's one now. So as you can see there, one is for something on my system for myself. It doesn't have to do with anything. So let's just say, oh, here's COM16, create COM port. Just give it a little bit. We should actually see COM16 pop up here, connect to it. And we're basically connected wireless. This is absolutely awesome and super simple. So created, connected, beautiful. Let's move this guy to the side. We said COM16, as you can see, COM16 showed up there, connect. And boom, we're connected. You can do everything you want to do. Enable the motors, do whatever you want. Just be careful with this stuff, especially if your battery's on, your props are on. Make sure it's away from you. So I highly recommend don't mess with the modes or anything. Just do the PID tuning, uh, the rates, whatever you want. Actually, you can do your OSD too. If you don't like something, you can actually move it on the fly while you have your goggles on, your quads on. You can actually move this stuff and it'll move right on the spot. And uh, it's, just, it's, it's, actually, it's pretty damn awesome, actually. And well, that's all there is to it, guys. Just uh, it's just that simple. You never have to flash that thing ever again. All you need is this program and just connecting to that Wi-Fi thing. So basically, your quadcopter is going to turn into a wireless router, and that's it. So just make sure that you use the correct IP address I gave you down below, and just follow on the instructions, and you should be good to go. And um, and yeah, well, that's going to conclude it for this video, guys. And I really hope it helped someone out there. And yeah, so that's really it. That's it's just that simple. I mean, it seems a little bit complicated, but it's really not. Um, and by the way, I do have a Discord for the channel, and I do have a special Discord for the Patreon that's within itself. So if you guys want to join that, I'll also leave a link to that down below. Uh, if you need help, I'll try to help you. I, I don't have a lot of time to actually, you know, put some so much time in the Discord right now, but I do come on at least once a day, and um, usually towards this time of day, which is you know, 10:30 my time. I don't know what time that would be your time, but usually towards the night time of my time in Europe time. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.